there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to paint this uh, stack of teacups, and this was originally going to be a Critique Club painting, but it was a lot quicker than I thought it was going to come out, so I decided I would post it on YouTube anyway. So if you are feeling like you want to loosen up, you want to do kind of a whimsical painting, grab your watercolors. We're going to use the Ganzai Tambi watercolors today, and some new paper that I've been trying out. I really like it. It's inexpensive Meaden watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton. I think it might be the Bohang paper because they also sell that kind, and it does seem very similar. Worked really great today, and uh, this is a pretty quick painting. In fact, I kind of feel like I could have just let it be done when I was what, halfway through because I don't know it was just kind of like it was just kind of working as a quick easy little watercolor painting so I hope you enjoy this thank you so much and let's get right into the tutorial and I'm gonna start by sketching out the stack of teacups I'm gonna start with a saucer on the bottom and I'm thinking I'm gonna go more of a whimsical route with it than a realistic route so I kind of wanted to be kind of like almost fantasy like, oh, you know what? I have my M. Grams here, but now I'm thinking maybe I want to get my, um, I'm thinking now I kind of want to go get my Genzai Tambi Art Nouveau set. I think that actually would be better. So we've got our first cup here. I'm using a reference photo from Unsplash. Oh, I think I might want to go get those other paints. It's kind of funny when you, um, you know, you start something and say, oh, wait a minute, it would be cool if we did this thing, you know? <laughs> but I was thinking, because at first I was thinking, and I, sometimes I have to think of an idea, then I gotta like take a little break, and I've gotta see, uh, you know, I've gotta, I've gotta see how practical it is, and I was thinking that long, skinny, Paper would be so cool to uh, to work on. Oh, looks like an ear. Um, but then I'm like, ah, that's gonna be that's gonna be hard to film. And I don't know. I was just thinking, and I, but it was a long skinny paper that made me think of doing a stack of teacups. And so then I'm like, well, let me find some teacup reference photos. And then I, you know, and then you know, one thing leads to another. Then you have another little brainstorm. Then another another little brainstorm. That's just how it works, right? It's just how it works. Get another little teacup ear over here, right? And I'm, yeah, I think I'm gonna do some steam. I don't wanna put too much on here with a pencil because this pencil is my black wing matte and it's very, um, it's very dark, so. Yeah, I think I also want to put like maybe a tea bag. Let's do a tea bag over here, maybe there. I feel like this side of the painting is a little heavy, so. Now I'm gonna go off the paper, that doesn't matter. And I'm gonna put the tea bag like it hasn't been used yet. It's just gonna be leaning up against, against here, I think. Yeah, I think that'll work out all right. I'm gonna get, a, I think I'll lighten up my sketch a little bit, but I think I will go grab the other paint. I'm thinking I really wanna use that now. Great brainstorm, guys. I got the paints. I sprayed them with water. I got some water. I am in business. Um, so I did move a little tea bag tag up a little smidgen. I did erase some of the just hairy lines, but really, uh, I'm just gonna go with it. I think this is gonna work pretty well. I think I might bring in some watercolor crayons. I'm feeling like I want to be, kind of just wild and free with this one. So I'm gonna start off with my large round brush. I'm using my craft ammo brushes, by the way. And I had a loose ferrule on one, so I, I contacted the company and they said to gently um, squeeze the ferrule with some pliers. And I had some nylon jewelry pliers, so I used that. And it worked great. So um, if you don't have nylon pliers, if you just have the metal ones, just like wrap a little piece of cloth around it. So, or a paper towel or something, so you don't scratch the metal. It worked great. I was so happy that that was such an easy fix, but I wanted to share that in case, um, in case you were, you know, also having that issue. Uh, the reason I want to do something that's kind of like just wet and juicy here is because I want to see how this paper handles wet washes. I think it's going to do pretty well, to be honest. I'm not even sure what colors I really want to do. I'm just going to... 
and have fun with it, I think. Um, I do like this. This paper feels a lot like Arches. I think it's probably the Baohong because they also, Meadon also sells the Baohong paper, so it makes sense that that's what this is. I don't know if it's the Academy or the regular kind. I've only used the Academy before. Something else I like to do sometimes is to uh, get a bunch of color down and then just spritz it. I don't have a mixing area right now because I find that um, these paints are best just to let them kind of mix and mingle on the paper. And maybe just maybe guide them a little bit of a spray, maybe. To go right out the out to the edge in that way because you never know like how you're gonna want to mat it or anything. I am not ruling out the idea of an opaque medium like I mentioned the watercolor crayons. Any other colors? I feel like I need something darker down here. I might need to go into my M grams just to get some darker, maybe some mauve. I do have my M Grand palette over here still, so I'll grab some mauve. I think dioxazine vinyl might be a little too much. That might be a little too intense. Maybe some like Prussian blue. Yeah, I think Prussian blue would have a really good vibe here. Impression is really strong. It almost looks like phthalo blue. Maybe I mislabeled it. Hmm. Could I have? I don't think so. No, I think that's Prussian. Good old PB27. The Prussian blue we know and love. What if I, I might mix a little bit of that Prussian blue with some of this really dark green color, even though I just said that, you know, you might not want to mix it, but the emgrams are very strong and transparent, so I'm thinking that might work out pretty nicely. Now I've done something weird to the shape of this tag, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna completely mess it up. <laughs> and why don't we do a little spattering of that color? Cause why not? I definitely want the feeling of, um, oh, kind of chaos. Oh, I should think I just like the one wisp of smoke, but now I've got to do more because I've already committed. Kind of looks like there's some like evil witches brew in this teacup. Who knows, right? Who knows? You'll dry the brush off and pull some color out. I don't know. What do I want to do for some teacup colors? So many nice choices here. Maybe some of this. I'm not feeling like I need to like really do. I, I just want to get some color down. Kind of break that uh, white page. I might even use some metallics on here. Oh, maybe some pink. Um, kind of that dusty rose color there. Let's try some of that. I kind of like things spilling around and getting all loosey-goosey juicy on those first layers because then, I don't know, it like takes the pressure off for those last, you know, to put those final layers in, in my opinion.
I know it probably looks like a mess to like, you know, to the untrained eye. You guys all have trained eyes, you know it's not a mess. You know we're in the hot mess phase. The delicate point every painting must go through, the hot mess phase. I love to do this first, the first layer with like a really big brush and then not get too perturbed over anything, just kind of go with the flow. Go with the flow, my friends. Go with the flow. Whenever I do this, I'm like flinging, I fling paint everywhere. I have it all over like my computer. I will look at how different the texture of the M. Graham paint is where it's like, it wants to kind of um, do like a little blossoming. I kind of like that white space up there. I think I'm gonna keep that. I think I, I, think I like it. Um, I love that like apple green color. It's so pretty. I think I want my saucer to be that color. This paint is so, um, is so, I don't wanna say thick, viscous maybe. It's definitely, it just got like this, it's a pastel color, so I wouldn't say that it's like super strong. It's just really, uh, pro I don't know, it has, a, it has a good body to it. It's really prominent. That is really going everywhere. I don't think I love that, but I'm gonna let it do its thing. Because when it dries, it'll probably be a little bit less opaque looking. And what do we want to do for that bottom cup? I want to have a little bit of contrast. Do I want it purple? Hmm. I don't know. I kind of want some yellow, but uh, I don't think that's enough contrast with that. So I think I will do the purple. Let's try. Maybe I'll leave that. I want to call it a stem. It's not a stem. Handle. Maybe I'll do pink. I could do pink, kind of pinky highlight on that. And I could do the handle with that pink and I could do a little whoosh. Oh, I don't know if I like that. That's all right. It's whimsy. It's whimsy. How about maybe, let's see what this looks like. A little shadow on the saucer with that green. All right, I'm gonna see if there's anything I need to blot up. That's just feeling really, I don't know, weird. I don't like that shape. Away with you, shape. Any, put any puddles may turn to blossom, so if you don't want that, then soak them up now. Actually, I'm gonna leave that be. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. All right, so I know it's probably a little shiny, so I'm gonna tip it a bit just so you can see what we got for colors. We're gonna let that dry, and then when we come back, we're gonna layer on. Look, you can't even see the steam anymore. I don't know if we should do something about that. Maybe take a rag and just kind of wipe some wisps. I love that. I hope I keep it. All right. Okay, we're gonna let this dry. We're gonna leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't fiddle with it. And then we'll come back and add to it. I had a little area there where I accidentally pulled the saucer color a little too far in. So I'm gonna try scrubbing that out. Generally, your more opaque paints will scrub a little bit better. So I am gonna scrub that out on that little tea tag or tea bag rather. Won't be able to get a super crisp line, I don't think, but I'll be able to lighten it enough that I'll be able to go over it with. I think that I'll probably end up using, um, I kind of like some of those splashes though. I think I'll probably end up using a white pen or white paint marker to do some definition. And then I think I'll just use like a, just kind of brush over this whole thing. All right, the lifting on this paper might not be the best, honestly. 
I'm going to leave that alone. I think that's fine. All right. So um, a lot. this painting is going to take a lot of just kind of playing it by ear, I think. I'm going to go with this round number eight. Some of this, I love this, uh, this corally colored pink. Oh, that's not going to show up at all. I'm going to need some of this. This uh, darker color. The thing is, I need to, I want to keep a lot of like the, the sparkle that I have. I don't want to dull my sparkle. But I love having those little splashes and little whimsical bits kind of kind of showing, you know? I like that. I like how there's a little bit of blue in there. Maybe I'll just soften that. This might be something I'll end up leaving kind of plain. Like I really love the colors in there. I really, I recommend these paints. They're just, I mean, not as your first set of watercolors, not to learn on because I think they're, you know, that could be a little, uh, a little tough because they are all kind of convenience colors and they're, you know, they'll be more tending to make a muddy mix because of the, the opacity in them. But as far as just for like a little creative block breaker, Something fun, you know? Absolutely. They are so much fun. It's funny, sometimes I think I'm gonna get, oh, I'm gonna get so much contrast from this, and then I, I go and use it, it's like, oh, no, that's not really providing me much contrast, contrast at all. That one didn't change much when it dried. And you just don't know sometimes. I like the pink handle though. There's something I'm not liking about this one. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Maybe just be that handle in general. It's got a weird, you know, because it's facing you. I'll have to circle back to that one. And let's see, we've got a couple interesting greens here. That's a green we, we started with. This is kind of uh, interesting green. I gotta see what that looks like on the, see what this one looks like. Let's mix them. I know I was just saying earlier that it's not the best for mixing, but I feel like I need uh, something that's gonna go with that a little bit better. I don't know. Oh shoot, that's not dry yet. And I'm putting that right in there. I'm just going for it. That's going to be the weirdest shaped tea tag ever, but I'm okay with it. I'm going to wipe some of that paint back because I don't want to lose so much of that apple green. I love the apple green color. Hmm. I don't know. It's been kind of wonky. I don't think I like that. I'm going to go back to the apple green. See if I can bring some of that freshness back in there. Yeah, I'm gonna just let it kind of bleed. I'm gonna go back to this. What color was it? Oh, I think it was this. I think it was the, did I use oppression? Or maybe some of this blue. Maybe I used to mix together. What was the Prussian blue on my other palette? Um, I'm going to do some, Maybe some 
of this lighter blue. I like the curly cues, but I don't want it to be too dense, you know? I wonder about highlighting this cup with that lighter blue color because it could be reflecting from that one above. And actually, maybe I could do a little highlight there. It's like, what can we do? Can we make some of the colors bounce off of one another? I think that's a really fun thing to do. Anytime we can kind of cross these colors. I like that color a lot. I think I would like to spatter some of that that come to cobalty teal looking color. I like to do that with my bigger brush because it can hold a lot more water. And I know not everybody likes spatters. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. This is art. I'm not your boss. I'm your spiritual leader. <laughs> Not even that. I am your, I don't know. I don't know what I am. I am what I am. Uh, hmm, that needs a little more definition. Yeah, just a little bit. I don't know. All right, gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for the tea bags. I think I want to go back to the pink because um, I think that would be that would be nice for the tag anyway. Uh, gosh, I really should dry this little area here, but I'm thinking uh, maybe starting off with this coral color, then maybe adding some of that darker pink to it. I'm not gonna dry the whole thing. I just want to dry this area. I kind of also want to do this, like this kind of in a, well, we don't have any, well, we do have bright reds, but that's not going to go with this picture because my mother always drank Salada tea. Well, she still does. So like whenever I go over there for a cup of tea, I'm going to have Salada and that's got those octagon, those red octagon um, tags that have the uh, <laughs> kind of dorky sayings on them. You know, they always have some silly saying on them. I'm not like tea loyal. I will drink whatever, whatever tea. I don't really notice a huge difference between teas. For some reason, uh, I can't make a tag today. I don't know why, but I'm having a really hard time. Goodness, we will be availing ourselves <laughs> to the paint pens before this piece is done, or maybe some watercolor crayons, I don't know. The tea bag itself, I think I'll do this kind of like, I don't even know what this color is called. It's kind of like a moody grayish color, but it does granulate, although I don't know if I'll have enough water here to get that effect. I'll do the string with a pen. I kind of would love to get a little granulation happening in there though. I think that'd be really, really nice. This color granulates here in the palette. And we can't see in the cups. I didn't think about that. Think about doing something where you could see in the cups and actually get uh Ooh, that's kind of a neat effect. And actually get the um the TT itself. Alright, I think we're we're getting somewhere, guys. We're getting somewhere. This is really juicy again, and I feel like it needs, I feel like it needs to dry, but on the other hand, I also feel like I want to put a shadow under the saucer and kind of let it bleed. Um, going into this dark green, mixing with some Prussian blue on my M. Graham palette. I'll just show you that real quick. See, we've got this palette over to the side. Because there's not a lot of dark, like really dark value colors in that Kiritaki Art Nouveau palette. Honestly, though, I have to say, except for like the, the like the really bougie wooden palette that they came out with, the Gansai Tan by Paints are very affordable. You know, they really are. You just bleed where you want to bleed, T-Tag. I'm not even going to stop you. 
I'm gonna say go forth. Go forth and conquer. Might regret it, but I think I will. I will uh, be. Yeah, I think I'll just want to kind of uh, judge, judge this up with some pen. But I kind of like that. I wish that was a little darker in there. You know, I'd like to use some PBK. I love it. I think I have some in this other palette. Oh my word, how many palettes what do you need for this thing? So I've got my little palette here. This actually will fit in my Ungram palette or... Oh no, things are starting to come unstuck. Um, so I've got this color here. It's very granulating. I'm thinking, I think I'll add some of that or this Mars Brown. Actually, the Mars Brown. I'm going to add some of that in there. I don't know if it's wet enough to granulate, but I'm going to give it a try. Hopefully. I haven't used these in a while. Hopefully it's, oh yeah, it's coming right up. I don't know if this is, I think this is a Renaissance color. I have so much paint in there already, it's almost like it doesn't want to accept any more paint. You're going in there, paint. I'm going to stir you up a little bit. That's okay if this tea bag ends up being a little bit bigger anyway. Throw it a little bit wider at the bottom. Now I want some granulation. So if I want granulation, i got to leave it be and not dry it with a heat tool. i just got to be patient, which isn't my best attribute, but... I'm going to let this dry. Mmm, I'm feeling positive. And we will see it in a few moments. Alright, this is completely dry. I think I had too much pigment in there to get it to see the granulation, so that's kind of a bummer, but I'm going to be fine with it. I've got some paint pens here. These are Ohuhu paint markers. This is not the case they came in, but these are new. Um, and I figured I'd give them a try. So, I'm going to try the white. There are metallics in there too, so I might use metallics. They, this, these actually have a fine tip, like the Posca Extra Fine, and then a bullet tip. Show you. Ah. Bullet tip there. I don't know if I'll use the bullets. I I don't know how much of this I want to do. And the, there are some metallic ones, although I don't know if they're metallic enough. So, I want to kind of do that with one... all right I don't really yeah I don't it's like I don't know I don't know what I want to do you know something kind of starts off you have such a you have an idea but then it's like as you go you're like oh I don't know if I like that idea swirly steam lines. All right, let's see. What other colors do we have? Let's do... Um, it's not really a lot of... Oh, you know what? I'm thinking... I actually have some other acrylic markers that I think might work better. These Arctic ones because they're more translucent. I think I might use some of them. I know. What a mess. What a mess. I have this huge... I've got this huge, uh, there, oh, I like that a little bit better. Um, well, maybe I'll bring in some of this. I wonder how that would look with this. Hmm, I don't know. Let's scribble that off on something and see. Hmm, I don't know. Is that too orange? That might be a little too orange. I do want something kind of bold. I love this. Not too pink. I think that's too pink. I need the Goldilocks color. Or I need red. Maybe I need red. Red. 
you know what, red is a surprising color. Red go, I feel like red is kind of a neutral because it does, it does go with a lot of things. And then maybe I can add some little like sparks of And some little sparks of red up here. Red is energy. That's why it's my favorite color. It's so energetic and and fun. I'm gonna leave this one out though because I'm actually I should leave out the colors, all the colors that I've used. I think I used that. Did I use that one? I think I used that one. That way I won't get uh, I won't get too confused over what colors I have used or not. I tend to like just mix everything up anyway. I like the energy of these lines. This one's a metallic, but I think it's just about the right color. I think I will use the bold. Oh, I don't know if I like that metallic, actually. It's a little too... Well, I'll put a little bit up here because I've used it somewhere. I feel that if you, put, if you do put the paint somewhere, then you got to put it somewhere else. You know, you don't just want to put it in one spot. This, I think, is more what I was after that's a little bit better than maybe I'll add some of that reflect it in I don't know if this looks like a handle really That's a pretty color. I like that. I think that there are so many beautiful products. It doesn't stand out enough. You can't even see it. There are so many great products out there that, you know, you definitely can find, definitely can find something, you know, no matter where you live. That's a really nice one. That's a nice color. It's kind of like a dreamy, whimsical, teal color. And some of that color. Oh, I like that. I like that. I feel like it needs something dark. I don't know if I want to go to black because that's pretty strong. Hmm, but I do want something dark under there. Uh, I've got a black and I've got a navy. I'm going to try the navy first. Ooh, I think that navy is pretty dark. Maybe. Maybe I can spread that out with a little bit of water. I don't know about that. But I've already put it down, so I want to put a little bit over here. The double-ended Artix markers are more gouache, so you can like blend them out a little bit better. Yeah, I don't think I, I mean, it's okay, but I don't think I really like that. I'm going to go for the black. And we'll see. We'll hope for the best here. Might be a little too much though. But I can blend it out if I'm quick while it's still wet. I, do, I mean, actually, I kind of do like the crispness of it.
oh, you know what I should use? Actually, I should use like an ink ink pen, like a, uh, like a water brush ink pen. What I'm gonna try to do is add maybe a little bit of gentle shading. You know what? <laughs> this poor thing doesn't have like a really strong light source, so it's like, where am I gonna put these shadows? We just got light bouncing around here. Like there's a disco ball reflecting everything around and it's kind of unsettling. Do, 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 do. Yeah, let's see, this is easier to deal with. Hmm. I think, I think it's a little easier to deal with. All right, let's cap this up. Uh, I don't really like that brush. That brush is a little too stiff for blending out the ink. I don't know. I don't even know what kind of ink. I think it's a waterproof ink, but it might not be. I don't know. I've got so many random pens because they come in like, you know, I used to get those smart art boxes and you get these random pens and sometimes you get like one you really like and that's great when that happens. And then sometimes you just get some random one. You have no idea if it's waterproof or not and you forget by the time you go to use it again. And this is definitely lifting up what's, if it's not lifting up the, the dark, the black, it's lifting up what's underneath and blending it in, so whatever. It's gonna, it's gonna work. All right, so now that black looks really harsh to me. So I'm gonna go back in with the colors. And be a little bolder with those guys. You know, not everything has to be super detailed. I mean, I kind of was liking the way it was before, but I was like, ah, oh, it needs to have more. It's not enough. It's not enough happening. But maybe there was enough happening and I was just feeling like it had to be longer. be light there. Let's look at this. Oh, this marker's like the same color. The same thing. All right, do you want to do some metallics? I think, I think this could be helped with some metallic. Maybe I'll try these new Ohuhu metallics. What's this? Gold? This is bronze. Let's see what this looks like. I mean, I would think kind of go with silver, but, well, you know what, silver probably would be a better idea because everything is pretty cool in temperature. Let's try the silver. Oh, that doesn't post. Actually, let's start with a little silver staple on our tea bag. That works. And then, We could do some silver on the on the handle and on the rims maybe. I don't know, it's kind of like you wanna put it somewhere, but then you don't wanna you don't wanna I'm gonna staple there too. You don't wanna change. Stuff that you like. Maybe I'll draw a little teacup on the little tea tag. I don't know. I kind of feel like it's done. You know, I kind of feel like it is. Yeah, I think I'm gonna sign my name with a silver pen. 
and call it a day. And there you have it. We are done. What do you think? Um, I think it looks really cute and really fun, and I hope it inspires you to get out your supplies and do some painting today. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you do like uh, longer tutorials, I have a critique club group that has tons and tons, over a hundred real-time mixed media tutorials that are a little more in-depth than this, but uh, you may enjoy them if you like to try a bunch of different things. And I'll put a link down to that down below to that in the video description if you would like to check that out. Thank you so much for watching today. And until next time, happy crafting!